And speaking of which, we are getting into game number... Well, game number one of this special series. Spawning up the top left, it is... SEV. In the blue. His opponent, all the way in the bottom right-hand corner of Oceanborn, it's Jishi. In the red. I did the same color introduction this time around. Nice, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Symmetry. People love symmetry. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this one's kind of cool because, yeah, Jayshi's kind of been around the block at this point, and he has... I think he's going to have a, a tough time challenging for first place in the region because, you know, Oliveira exists, and Oliveira's been an absolute monster for... I mean, he's been a monster in this region for years, but obviously... He found a new gear with that championship run. But mm -hmm. I do think Jayshi is one of the players that could put up a fight. I look at players like Cyan, like Jayshi, like Coffee, as some as one of the players or some of the players that could be like, well, you know what? No, you're you're not a lock for this region. But we'll have to see if SCV can kind of maybe punch a little bit above his weight and find a little upset here. No, absolutely. There are, um, there are sev uh, several players that are really good in this region, right? It's actually quite difficult to predict. I think it's pretty clear that Oliveira is going to be the favorite going into this entire region, but it's not going to be a, a clean path to victory, I don't think. Um, just maybe getting a bit of confidence as well, right, from winning Katowice last year. It certainly seemed to, uh, well, make him a much better player all around, but yeah, Gigi is certainly one of the players who can... Well, I don't even really want to call it an upset so much, but he's been really growing into his own over the years. Then again, though, the first match here, it's it's Protoss versus Protoss, right? And this is a matchup where the margin for error is tiny. So making one little mistake, and you know what? I was going to say, is that a mistake or are we just trying to... Okay, there you go. Start it up, mm -hmm. cancel the Zealot, and then go for the Nexus. That is a very cute little move right here. That was uh, That was a fake out if ever there was one. Uh, mm -hmm. So he started that Zealot to show, like, hey, yeah, I'm going double unit. You don't need to worry about blocking my Nexus at this timing. Uh, I see and he then... did the same thing, by the way. He also canceled his second unit and then went oh. into the Nexus. Yeah. That is cute. Uh, We're just I think doing SCV... a single century expand. Is that basically what's going on right now? That's what right. we're seeing. Yeah. Somebody wake up Wardy. He's going to be excited. Wardy was so excited to see the new sentries yesterday. And then, well, we didn't really <laughs> get to see them on this region. But now we have a century expand. Let's go. It's so funny to do a two gate expand and then basically one gate expand anyways. Like you basically, you've only used the first gateway for the first little bit. Obviously mm -hmm. it's not the same as a one gate expand, but no. at this point, the premise, like I wonder if we'll see an evolution where players are like, ah, you know what? Yeah, like I can just build sentries or like the power of the new sentry just pushes more and more people towards max paxing. Maybe, yeah. There's one of those moments in StarCraft as well, right, where it's almost like a gentleman's agreement where we're like, okay, yeah. if I'm going to go for a fast expansion, uh, yeah, you, you're going to do it too, right? And then we just end up both players just not really making a whole lot of units because right now, do you really need any sort of unit that isn't a sentry, right? <laughs> the sentries are pretty <laughs> sweet here, which is kind of funny. They don't really... So, so just to clarify, they've lost their light tag and they do a little bit of additional damage to shields and all that, so... They're just a little bit more sturdy and they deal a bit more damage. It really isn't super significant on paper, but in actual games, they're just more sustainable to play. So especially against like an Oracle and, you know, just the early game units, Adepts as well, you just find yourself keeping, uh, or you, you just find yourself with those sentries alive for a little bit longer. And well, obviously they're also really sweet for scouting. It's going to be gateways, by the way, here, added into the mix together with a, a Robo Facility for Jishi and then a Twilight Council for SCV. So a little bit of a tech deviation as Ooh. a couple of Adepts do sneak into the main. Yeah, they uh, they managed to get their way in here and that is gonna be, that's gonna be four probes. Not bad at all. Uh, certainly, certainly an unforced error coming out here and you do not wanna be making those mistakes in just a best of three. Now on the other side of the map, we do have, yeah, that Warp Prism showing on up. And this is not SCV letting these units in. This is them appearing behind him. The, this is the nothing personnel kid and uh, teleports behind you meme. But that is a lot of damage. And this was a very slow response yeah. from SCV. Where where were the units? Like th there was, oh my God, he's going to lose more in the natural too? 
But also oh. not the greatest target firing, Red Dardo. On those Adepts, a lot of bruised probes. They've already regenerated some of their shields again, but I think it could have... Like, even though he got a lot already, right? Like, getting eight probes here is really good. I kind of feel like he could have gotten into the double digit at the very least. But yeah, why were those units sleeping on the job there for just a moment? The Prism also just decided to fly away quite early. It looked like there may have been a bit of an all army hotkey or something along those lines, but ultimately though, that was a good bit of damage done and that really justified losing a couple of his own probes there a little earlier, right? When those two adepts managed to sneak in on the other side of the map. Yeah, uh, both players may be showing a little bit of nervous jitters to start things off. Definitely not the cleanest play. Now, we are going to see Jayshi coming in here with a six-gate Glaive Adept timing. That is going to be very difficult to deal with. Of course, those Adepts are so cheap, and you can build them so quickly. It's not so much their fighting power, it's their mass ability that makes them really powerful here, and especially when you compare them with on a mortal or two, and in this case, there is going to be three immortals with this push. Where is that third immortal? I think it's just crossing the map right now. Yeah, there it is. This is so much punch with this two base, uh, basically two base all in. Yeah, no, absolutely. He needs to get something done. Starting right here with the sentry is amazing, of course. Problem is the Adept will fall off the longer that the game goes on, but he is hitting a really lovely timing. Maybe getting rid of that shield battery, targeting it down would not be a bad choice, but at this point, we've just got so much damage already being done. Big shade into the main base as well. And just like that, it is game over. The good old Glaives and Immortals. It's not the most popular build in the current meta, but it can still catch you off guard if you're not careful. And well, that was an excellent example of exactly that. I mean, it went downhill as soon as those two Adepts in the main base got so much damage done, right? And then the follow-up just is nearly impossible to hold. Yeah, that just, that felt really... That, that felt really funny where both players didn't... They didn't play optimally, to say the very nope. least. Like, obviously, letting those two Adepts in on Jayshi's side. And then a very late response to the Adepts on the other side. And then Battery Overcharge gets popped and doesn't get targeted down, but it doesn't matter because there's so many units. Like, it was, it was just <laughs> a... It, it was a lot of, I think... I thought... I think it was a... a this was, you know, an early morning type of game. Obviously, it's not early morning where they are. It is, in fact, probably, it's like the evening, like late, late yeah. in the evening. Uh, but there is a very different thing getting into a competitive mindset. So I, I hope at least both players will maybe, maybe shake those nerves off and get things going for game two. Because we are getting into, uh, it's going to be Crimson Court. Yeah, first time we're seeing that map here today. But we did see it a bunch so far in this tournament already. Very fun map, actually. I think this is one of the better maps. Uh, probably my personal favorite when it comes to just standard macro maps with a bit of a twist from the new set. And it's exciting to see that uh, these players are apparently happy to play a Protoss versus Protoss on it. But I'm, I'm definitely... Uh, I'm with you. Like That was not the cleanest game. There was certainly um, room for improvement on both sides. And ultimately, it was Jishi right there who came out ahead. But he also ended up, for example, having those adept slip into the main base, right? Now... Obviously, you may be thinking like that, that that's a very easy mistake to make because that is something that only takes like half a second to slip up with. But it is something you have to constantly deal with with Protoss versus Protoss. It's just one of those threats that's, well, basically present in every single game that you play. So you always have a probe on, well, hold position there to complete the wall off and prevent that from happening. And seeing those units shade in, it always is a little bit painful. Yeah, it always is. But uh, I mean, ultimately, a dub's a dub. <laughs> and mm -hmm. even if even if you make them that's the thing sometimes you can't play perfectly it's it's being able to adapt on the fly and this man was able to do it spawning up the top right for dragon kites of gaming it is Jiaxi in the red and his opponent playing right here with the blue protos pieces not a Terran player but his name is SCV It'd be really fun if those are just his like initials or something you know like, it's not actually Space Construction Vehicle. It's not even a reference to a Terran unit. <laughs> That'd be so cool. Uh, he's, yeah, he's just like, everyone's like, oh, man, I love your name. It's so funny. You're subverting expectations. And he's like, what? <laughs> I don't know. What, what do you mean? <laughs> That's just my, you know, those are just my initials, yeah. My name's Sean Caleb Babbitt. 
There you go. He's yeah. got a very American name. Yeah, it's super American. It's really. <laughs> it's, his parents were very. They loved to subvert expectations too. You know. <laughs> exactly. I've already forgotten what name I said. <laughs> It started with Sean. I, oh, I, I don't that was think, the one I, I don't forgot. The odds of it being Sean are very good, but Sean maybe, Caleb Babbitt. It could also just be that he's a Terran player. I mean, we, oh we used to be a Terran player once upon a time, right? I mean, we 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 have heard of a Zerk player from Italy who also has a very Terran-like name, but then with a bit of a typo in there, so it's it's not unheard of in the StarCraft community. That's true. I also just realized I said Babbitt, but it's it's V at the end, not B. I just <laughs> yeah. I, I I didn't know exactly what you said, but I, I figured you said it correctly. But I did notice something that sounded a little yeah, off. something sounded <laughs> off. Yeah, it's all right. Space SCB. construction vehicle. <laughs> SCB, good to go, sir. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's yeah, that's that's the excuse I can make. Uh, we are going to see a little bit of a switch up for the first time in this whole shebang. We've got both players opening up quick Stargate. Uh, now this is unlikely to be phoenix wars because it's not the one gate expand version that you know uh mm -hmm. kind of propagates that whole thing but it's still technically a possibility oh, phoenix wars are a very awkward occurrence in starcraft 2 <laughs> if we get there we can talk about it at length because it's it's a really funny thing uh, i always love watching it even though it's uh, one of the worst feelings when you have to play it because it's just so difficult to well, obtained a victory in those types of matches, but it should be an Oracle here, I would imagine, for both. Yep, yeah. there it is indeed. Double Oracle. Makes a lot of sense. Now, there is a moment that when you figure out, hey, my opponent is playing, you know, a Stargate 2, that you do follow it up, for example, with an Oracle. Or with a Phoenix of your own, because it's really good to counter the opponent's Oracles, and then sometimes you sort of get stuck in a limbo. <laughs> you have to keep building those units as well, but so far we're not there yet. No, and it, it looks like with a quick Twilight Council from GHE, we are saved from that. Uh, as Zombie Grub would would say, just the worst thing in in history. <laughs> she is not fond of the Phoenix Wars. Although to be fair, I like seeing it like you know, like every yeah. every couple of weeks, it's fun. If yeah. it's if it's like a, a regular occurrence, it's just okay. We're both sitting there. We're just making phoenixes. Is somebody gonna make the fleet beacon? Mm, maybe you shouldn't have. <laughs> it's also so messy. Yeah. It's yeah. It's it's definitely one of those things that. It's what makes it beautiful is its rarity for sure. Uh, yeah. Now this is a kind of an interesting start here because of course one player did open up stalkers, one player opened up adepts, and those adepts did get gunned down very quickly. So SCV losing those first two units and Jayshi with a very quick blink, and the fact that he went for those early stalkers means he gets value from it as well. Uh, this is. This is a pretty nice start for the Red Protoss player, considering they started off not mirrored, but somewhat mirrored a little bit. No, you're absolutely right. Now it's two oracles inside of the main base, though. Okay, we do have to target fire properly, Ooh. and there we go. Ooh, don't lose one of the oracles. That is a bit unfortunate. You really want to keep those alive because they put on so much pressure. Even just occupying a bunch of stalkers is huge. Decides to go back in for the natural right now. Okay, five workers here is not bad, but I do think losing an oracle is kind of rough. Then again, though, Jishi obviously also opened up Stargate of his own. And he is actually just going to make a Phoenix to get rid of these units. And that will uh, allow him to, well, at the very least, he's hiding. Yeah, close to the trees. Don't know how there isn't any... Uh... You'd imagine he gets stuck in the branches somewhere, but apparently not an issue. Yeah, that <laughs> that would be quite interesting. <laughs> getting, you... getting a bunch of leaves stuck in your engines seems like a terrible idea, but... You just have this you have this mechanic where like the unit just has like a twenty percent chance of just slowing down and just being kinda <laughs> caught. Uh speaking That's of being what we caught, need. We need RNG yeah, in our right? StarCraft games. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh people would love it. They would love it so much. Mm. I mean in Brood War there is the fifty percent miss chance for the high ground. Cause you yeah. you know what? I'm actually glad they got rid of that with StarCraft too, because that is too. one of those things that can just make the game so crazy. Although yeah, a little bit of randomness can certainly make the game more fun but i yeah i don't think starcraft 2 is a great fit for it i'm i'm glad that it's gone the way of less rng and more yeah more more finite stuff now we do have the dark shrine at completing but there is a quick robotic facility a relatively quick robotic facility for scv and it is going to be observer first not going for that immortal not feeling uh threatened 
you know, not feeling like his, his life is threatened in any way, but we are going to see the Phoenixes providing high ground vision. This could be a big play into the main base with these Blink Stalkers. Potential to pick off a few probes if uh, SCV is not quick to the draw. There we go to Dark Templar. The Observer, by the way, did spot them, but it decided to go across the map. There you go. It does need to turn back home. It's a very messy situation right now, though, because there's suddenly action inside of the main base, too. GC is forced to get on out of there. Probes are falling, but it looks like, yeah, they've been handled relatively well. Uh, the third Nexus, by the way, for SCV going down in the vertical position. Still one of them going to town oh. in the main base. Ambitious recall. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That that was like, uh, okay, I've killed like I've killed this thing. I'm gonna recall right now, and just very unfortunate luck. Kind of, we talk about RNG, but yeah. you can roll the dice and you can introduce a little bit of RNG, not knowing exactly where your opponent's units are. Uh, Jayshi comes out of this with a ten worker lead, though. This is a this is a real nice position for the Red Protoss player, and SCV is gonna have a a pretty difficult time coming back in this game. And he's gonna try to do so with the robotics bay. Interesting. Yeah. We haven't actually seen a lot of Disruptor player yet in this entire tournament, which is kind of interesting. I mean, not at least in this matchup. For some time, obviously, it was all about the Stalker and all about the Disruptor, but it's lost a bit of popularity, at least in like the, you know, quote unquote, earlier stages, I guess, of the mid game is what we can say. But it is, of course, a transition that we do see quite a bit. If you need a comeback mechanic, that's the one, right? In this particular matchup, if you can mm -hmm. get a good Disruptor Nova, it can certainly bring you back into the game. It's not like he's super far behind here either. Looks like actually JC has uh, stopped making SC or <laughs> he stopped making SCVs. Now I'm getting the name stripped up. Uh, though. He stopped yeah. making probes a little bit ago, but yeah, he should probably continue building him. Yeah, uh, I mean, you you can kind of sit on a relatively low probe count, especially in this matchup if you're only on three bases. You don't tech up super hard. But I do think Jayshi is, I mean, there's no reason to not be taking a fourth Nexus right now. And as I say that, he takes actually the high yield gas base in the middle of the map. What I'm really worried about for SCV right now is this big gateway explosion that's come online. It's nine gates to four and plus one weapons in charge are about to complete. This is a really strong timing. And how many disruptors do we have? It's gonna be at max one by the time charge completes and it's just gonna be popping out and not really in the safest position either. Plus there's a Phoenix that could potentially lift it and disable. Absolutely, Charge is now finishing up. So now obviously Disruptor is nice, but it's gonna have a hard time grabbing a lot of these units when they have so much mobility. So those units in red, they're gonna be fast. They're gonna be very nimble. There is gonna be a Nova available. Phoenix, okay, lifts it up. Look at that sideways lift as well. Too cool to even <laughs> look at that Disruptor. Uh, I don't actually like that lift though, because no. the disruptor hadn't fired its shot yet, so it doesn't it doesn't get any value from it. I feel like that just kind of threw away the phoenix, and now he he doesn't get to lift with it again. Uh, there's still a lot of kill potential right here for Jayshi, but with a second disruptor and some very patient play, oh that is gonna force a big blink forward. Now with the second disruptor out, that's a huge oh. nova. What was Jayshi thinking with that blink forward? That was not it. Maybe he thought that that first Disruptor had just spawned, but the second one was already available. He may still just simply have the numbers, though, despite that massive Nova. Yeah, yeah GG yeah. is cold. And ultimately, he just had enough stuff, right? And sometimes the game of StarCraft 